Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the lecture 14, Wave Propagation in PCB and Plane Resonance. My name is Chang Ho Kim. Um, today, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, wave propagation in PCB. Um, when we are sending high-speed digital signal through a transmission line, uh, we viewed it as a signal wave propagation along the transmission line. But however, today uh, I'm going to talk about power wave. There are two different waves in uh, multi-layer PCB. One is the signal wave and the other one is going to be a power wave. So today I'm going to talk about power wave propagation in PCB, in especially in multi-layer PCB. And uh, that is gonna be a very important part of a PDN design. And it's gonna, uh, this power wave will become a source of plain resonance in multi-layer PCB. So I'm going to uh, discuss and derive some equations to give you um, basic physics related to this power wave propagations. In circuit theory, we believe that power is delivered with a view of circuit theory, but in high frequency uh, digital systems, what I believe is that power is, should be viewed as a wave, electromagnetic wave that is propagating through a, a power ground plane with a speed of light. So it's gonna have some deflections and impedance mismatchings and those kinds of things has to be considered when we are designing uh, your printed circuit board. That's gonna be the major subject of class today. Um, uh, we're gonna uh, drive some equations. Uh, it's gonna be many uh, equations will be shown in these slides. So I feel very sorry for that. But in order to discuss the wave behavior of your power waves, we need to derive some equations. I feel very sorry for you. Uh, so right now I'm going to talk about power wave propagations in open-end termination. Here we have uh, this is the cross-sectional view of multi-layer power and ground plane. We have power planes and ground plane because one of the plane is power and the other plane is ground that, that cannot be connected. So it's gonna be open and terminations at the edge. To simplify the discussions, I'm gonna uh, derive equations assuming that we have a uh, one dimensional uh, power wave transmission line and both ends of the wave transmission line is open-ended because we cannot terminate with a register at the end because then we're gonna have DC current between power plane and ground plane. And also I assume that cross-section, the height of this, uh, lines are much smaller than wavelengths, that means we can define, that is true, especially for power and ground plane, because to reduce the impedance, we have to make very thin uh, waves. Um, that's, that's why we can define voltage and current wave. In order to define voltage and current cross-section of your power and ground plane should be very, very small. And that is the true because uh, in order to have very uh, low voltage drop in power distribution network, we have to have very low impedance. In order to achieve low impedance, we have to have very uh, thin dielectric uh, layer between power and ground plane. Um, uh, the phase notation of wave could be represented by exponential j omega t minus beta j. So a uh, voltage and current waveform in wave propagations 
will depending on time, frequency time, as well as propagation constant beta and position. If you have phase notation omega t minus beta g, that means this wave is propagating as a speed of light. If we accept that the phase notation of voltage can be represented by uh, this equation, the first term uh, is representing a wave, electromagnetic wave that is propagating along the g direction. And second term, exponential j beta g and g, uh, that is a wave uh, propagating in the backward direction, minus g direction, that means it is a wave reflected by the end of termination of this power and ground planes. Amplitude of a uh, voltage wave propagating into g direction is notated by a n. a is amplitude, n is representing a uh, mode number n. Later on, I'm going to show you that only a specific node can survive as a form of standing wave in the power and ground plane. And all, uh, for the case of wave propagating in the backward, that is actually reflected wave, and that amplitude is described here as Bn. B is amplitude and N is the mode number. Now, if we have voltage wave in this power and ground plane, we're gonna have current wave. We also have two waves. One wave is a component that is propagating into the G direction. Second current wave is a wave that is propagating into minus G direction. Actually, that is a reflected wave. That means in the, between the power and ground plane, we're gonna have two waves, voltage and current wave. And each voltage wave, we're gonna have positively traveling wave and negatively traveling wave. The relationship between positive wave and the negative the traveling wave will be determined by the uh, end of the terminations. Um, so this is a little bit difficult subject for students because uh, uh, now we are talking about power waves uh, between power and ground plane in multi-layer PCB. But in order to understand resonances and position dependency of the, your PDN impedances, we have to look at that as a form of wave propagation. That is why we have, well, now we are having some complicated uh, equations. And one interesting thing is that a uh, traveling wave to the minus direct D G direction is gonna uh, change the 180 degree phase difference between voltage wave and current wave. That is the property of electromagnetic wave. You can learn about this kind of thing in, in the uh, undergraduate electromagnetic wave classes. I, I'm not going to derive all these equations. Um, also, we know that um, the amplitude of current wave will be uh, obtained by dividing the voltage wave uh, with impedance G0. As I mentioned before, we have to have very small impedance in power and ground plane because that is how we can deliver maximum uh, current with the minimal voltage drops. That is the purpose or our target of PDN network, especially in multi-layer PCB. Also, a uh, traveling wave, current wave into minus G direction is gonna also uh, can be amplitude can be obtained uh, from the voltage wave divided by impedance. Um, so the, um, I'd like to summarize uh, here again. Um, in multi-layer PCB, a bit, uh, we, can, we can assign a layer for power and we can assign adjacent metal layer as ground. And in order to minimize the impedance between power and ground plane, that is the uh, target of our PDN design, we have to make very thin layer. That is how we can make very small uh, wave impedance. In signal line, 
you will usually uh, try to make it 50 ohm to make a balance. Uh, but in the case of power delivery network, target impedance should be milli ohm or micro ohm range. That is the first thing I want to talk about. At the end of this waveguide, a power ground plane waveguide is gonna be an open termination. So that's because of that, power wave will be deflected at the end of uh, power and ground plane is kind of open end termination. In those cases, we can define voltage wave and current wave. The voltage wave and current wave, the relation will be determined by the wave impedance in the uh, power and ground plane. And in addition to that, I'm saying that we're gonna have two voltage wave. One wave is traveling into the G direction and the other wave is gonna travel into the minus G direction. So by combining this uh, voltage wave and current waves and open termination condition, we can define the PDN network impedance. And so eventually I'm going to discuss about the PDN network impedance uh, in this specific condition of open termination. Uh, I'm going to derive those equations. Those are the uh, target of my uh, uh, class at the beginning of class today. Now, as I mentioned before in the previous uh, slide, we have uh, voltage wave and current wave uh, traveling into the G direction and traveling toward the minus G direction. Also, we're gonna have voltage wave as well as current wave. Um, detailed or, or rigorous uh, derivation of this equation will take some time, so I'm not going to spend that amount of time. And we usually uh, can find this kind of equation from a transmission line theory or microwave textbook or electromagnetics textbook. Now, what I'm gonna do is to determine A and B N under a boundary condition. So my next process will to determine, uh, to obtain uh, the A and A a and B. Now we can, because we have open end boundary condition, because end is open, that means that at the end, this is open condition. So we're going to have zero current when G is equal to zero and G is equal to L. Uh, this is G direction, one end. G is equal to zero, the other end, at the, the other end, G is equal to M. So we're gonna apply this open, open boundary condition into the current wave equation. When we have zero here, instead of G, uh, we're gonna have A N minus B N is equal to zero. Because of that, by applying the first boundary condition, I can obtain then A N is equal to Bn. Because of open boundary condition, we're gonna have same amount of amplitude of positively traveling wave and negatively traveling wave. Once again, I I'd like to remind you that this is not signal wave, this is power wave. Power wave are supposed to deliver big amount of current wave with the minimal voltage wave. That's why we want to have very small uh, wave impedance. Now, uh, current wave equation will have this kind of waveform uh, because, uh, because A N is equal to B N. Now, uh, this exponential uh, complex term can be rewritten as a form of sine uh, function because uh, our you, from the mathematic textbook, you can obtain this equation. Sine beta g can be represented by exponential form of complex uh, form, uh, co exponential complex uh, function, and div divided by a complex number. This is a definition of sine function with a form of exponential 
of complex numbers. So that means we can rewrite this voltage uh, wave as a function of G is gonna have some sine beta G form. Now we gonna have applied the second boundary condition where the current is gonna be equal to zero at the end. That is the open boundary condition. Then if we insert L instead of G, then we're gonna have sine beta G term inside the sine function. So it has to be equal to zero then means because of the condition of sine function, this beta and L, actually N is the mode number, beta and L should be equal to N pi. This is mathematics for high school level. Uh, because of that, beta N can be rewritten as N pi divided by L. N could be one, two, three. These are mode numbers. Because beta N is a form of two phi Fn square root of mu square. Um, this, uh, we can uh, obtain the function frequency uh, that meets the boundary condition one over two square root mu epsilon and divided by L. So I would like to shortly discuss meaning of this equation. Because of open end boundary condition, only a sine wave, traveling wave, who has specific frequencies can survive. And that will be determined by dimension of L, dimension of L and dielectric constant epsilon and mode number. So if we, we have power and ground plane, we're gonna have only certain frequencies and that's gonna stay there. And at those fre resonance frequencies, we're gonna have traveling wave into the G direction, and we're gonna have traveling into minus G direction, and the amplitude will be the same. And amplitude of this uh, uh, changing wave is gonna be frequency, uh, is uh, depending on this uh, resonance frequency and position. So once again, I'd like to shortly uh, summarize this slide. By applying the open boundary condition at this power and ground plane, only certain frequency can survive because at only certain frequency condition, we can meet the boundary condition because at the end, the current should become zero. And th those resonance frequency will be a function of dimension L, dielectric constant epsilon, and the mode numbers. And because of this, if you have a power and ground plane in multilayer PCB, only certain frequency can survive to deliver power to your system. That is a big uh, trouble. So your power delivery network has certain frequency selectivities. And because of this, also EM, if you have EMI problem, you, you're gonna have only a specific frequencies that is causing the EMI. In circuit theory, you never consider this kind of thing because you are assuming power network has zero impedance for all the frequencies, but actually in real physical uh, structures, um, only certain frequencies, we're gonna have standing wave because of boundary condition. And because of that impedance will be sometimes very high at those frequencies. Now, um, let me move on. And by applying uh, this, uh, uh, resonance frequencies and conditions, and we can obtain a, 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 
uh, and an is going to be the same by the arranging this we can also obtain the voltage and sine function sine the sine distribution is going to be determined by sine beta and g function however uh, voltage distribution along this power and ground plane is going to have cosine function this is summary of uh, all those equations if i summarize again uh, we apply the boundary condition and PCB is gonna have some size A and B that will determine this resonance frequencies. And also we know that dielectric constant will determine this resonance frequencies. And we're gonna have some discrete resonance frequencies that can survive inside and power and ground plane. Now let's take a look at uh, this form. First, let's look at voltage waveform. Of course, express J omega T is missing here. Uh, this is the, the sinusoidal uh, voltage waveform in with respect to time. This is more likely uh, space variations as a function of space G. If you look at this, when mode number is one, we can insert num n is equal to one. It's gonna follow this waveform. That means at the end of waveguide, we're gonna have maximum voltage. And at the center, at this resonance frequency, the voltage is gonna be zero. That means when you are bring, using power from this power ground plane, you have to put your circuit at the center at this specific frequencies. If you wanna minimize simultaneous switching noise and power fluctuations at this resonance frequencies, you have to put your circuit at the center of PCB. If you put your circuit at the near the edge, you're gonna have maximum simultaneous switching noise. Meanwhile, if for the case of mode number two, of course, at the edge, you're gonna have maximum voltage, but minimal voltage position will be quarter, uh, quarter uh, L divided by four. Here is the L divided by four. Th this position is L divided by four multiplied by three. So we're gonna have minimum of simultaneous switching noise at those frequencies. So what I would like to, by observing this, what I'd like to say is that depending on your mo mode number and resonance frequencies, you have to put your devices at certain positions. At certain positions, you're gonna have minimum power supply noise. And if you put your device at certain position like uh, at the edge, you're gonna have maximum simultaneous switching noise. So important meaning here is that impedance, impedance of PDN at certain resonance frequency is position dependent. So when you wanna minimize your simultaneous switching noise, and I'm assuming that you are connect your power and ground is connected to your multi-layer PCB, then your simultaneous switching noise amount is gonna be determined by resonance frequency, which resonance frequencies, and also it's gonna be depending on position of your devices. 
because voltage distribution is very position dependent and resonance frequency dependent. Why do we have this kind of situation? Because we have two traveling waves, incident wave and the negative reflecting wave, and they are interfering each other and they are creating standing wave. So this is very typical part of uh, your design. So when you are designing your on-chip PDN, package PDN, PCB PDN, you have to combine all this network and you have to figure out all the resonances and the impedance and inductance and capacitance. One of the typical part at some time is because you have to understand the wave power, wave properties of in your power and ground plane networks. The major purpose of your power network is to deliver current waves with minimal voltage. So you have to put your devices at a position with a minimal voltage. And also to maximize the current wave and minimize voltage wave, we have to minimize the uh, wave impedance in this power and ground plane. Now let's look at uh, the current wave. In the current wave as well, because we have sine function with respect to position G, when we have mode number one, we're gonna have this kind of uh, modulation of standing wave because we have a form of sine function with respect to position G. So because of that, we're gonna have zero at the end and zero at the other end. Why do we do that? Do we have this kind of situation? Because this is open termination condition. So open termination means current should be zero. So that means your PDN uh, power and ground plane at these two position has no capability to deliver current. They cannot send any current, switching current to your switching device. So if you put your device on the, at the edge, PDN network cannot send any current wave, current to the device. However, if you have a uh, your device at the center, you can maximally deliver a current for your device. However, for the case of mode number n is equal to one, we cannot send any current to the device. Of course, if you put your device at a quarter wave position, certain you can uh, supply the certain amount of current of mode one and certain amount of current for mode number two. I think this is kind of case of mode number two. So it's really a difficult situation. Um, I would like to summarize this slide again. Uh, let's assume you have multi-layer power and ground plane, then you're gonna have waves inside power and ground plane. Because of the open end termination, we're gonna have standing waves. Especially in open end case, um, at certain position, you can deliver maximum current with minimal simultaneous switching noise. At some point, you can have minimal current and maximum simultaneous switching noise. So uh, this is very simple case, so I can derive some equations, but in real cases, boundary condition is very complicated because you're gonna have decoupling capacitors, NDRs and so on. So you have to use some computer simulation to obtain this kind of things. Junior, uh, I'm sorry this part is a little bit difficult, but I I'm sure you are very good students and you understand, you I'm sure you can do that. Would you a little bit summarize this slide for me? Yeah, okay. 선생님께서 이제 PCB에서 이제 그라운드하고 파워 메탈 레이어 사이에서 이제 바운더리 컨디션은 이제 오픈 엔디드로 되어 있기 때문에 오픈 터미네이션으로 이제 바운더리 컨디션으로 이제 시그널 이제 전압과 전류 웨이브 웨이브 시그널 이제 도출하셨고 그 시그널 통해서 
이제 이 전압과 전유, 전유가 이제 포지션 디펜던트 하다고 말씀해 주셨고, 이제 그래프에서 확인할 수 있듯이 포지션에 따라서 이제 볼트지와 커렌트가 이제 맥시멈과 이제 제로 값을 가지게 되는데, 이제 PDN을 설계할 때 이제 적은 볼티지로 이제 맥시멈 커렌트를 이제 얻는 것이 굉장히 중요하기 때문에 이런 것을 고려해서 위치를 이제 PDN을 설계할 때 포지션을 잘 고려해서 설계해야 된다고 말씀해 주셨습니다. 예, 그래서 가, 너무 잘 설명해 줬고요. 그래서 이게 뭐냐면 파워를 전자파로 봐야 된다는 게제 핵심 여기 개념 중에 하나입니다. 일, 일반 회로 이론과는 달리 그렇지 않고는 파워를 웨이브로 보지 않고는 이런 특정한 레조넌스가 생기는 현상을 어, 설명할 방법이 없고 여러분들이 이제 컴퓨터 보드를 설계하고 CPU를 딱 설치를 할때 어디에 설치할 거냐가 여기에서 또 나오는 거예요. 그게 에, 어려운 어, 파트겠죠. 근데 이제 실제 문제는 이것보다 훨씬 복잡하지만 하여튼 이 파워가 공급된 스위칭할 때 기가할스, 100기가할스에서 할때 피코세컨 단위로 막 스위칭할 때 그게 공급되는 미커니즘은 거의 전파로 봐야 된다. 물론 이제 비아나 이런 걸 통과하면서 또 인덕턴스를 만나기도 하고 디캡이 또 중간에 있어서 물을 채우고 넘어가고 하긴 하지만 예, 어느 부분에서는 10기가에서 100기가 사이 뭐 아니면 기가할스 영역에서는 어, 웨이브로 봐야 된다. 그리고 왜 포지션이 이렇게 중요한가 그 얘기를 하기 위해서 이 단순한 세 번째는 특정한 한 주파수가 아니라 내전에서 계속 시리즈로 나타날 수밖에 없대요. 여기서 n이 등장하는데요. 그래서 디스크리트하게 존재한다. 그래서 전류를 공급하던 빼던 뭐 파워가 웨이브를 보는 순간 특정한 주파수만 공급할 수 있어요. 이렇게 특정한 공급 주파수인데 디지털 회로는 굉장히 넓은 대역을 쓰잖아요. 그러니까 중간에 디캡이 이런 전류를 받아서 물탱크에 좀 저장했다가 또 보내줘야 돼요. 예, 그런 면이 있습니다. Um, now let's take a look at with respect to uh, impedance. In the previous slide, I was able to derive the, derive the voltage function. And current function. If then we can obtain the impedance, voltage can be divided by uh, current. And then, if we I uh, derive the amplitude of impedance, it's gonna have two terms. First one is wave impedance, and second one is the cotangent function. Because it is sine divided by a uh, cosine divided by sine, we're gonna have cotangent function. If I draw this function, cotangent function, with respect to G, we're gonna have this. When we ha are having mode number n is equal to one, we're gonna have this kind of impedance. So that means. At the edge of power and ground plane, impedance is going to be infinite. Why do we, do we have infinite impedance? Because open, in open end termination, we cannot deliver any current. That's why we have open termination, uh, uh, infinite impedance. Of course, when G is equal to zero, also we're going to have infinite impedance. And when G is half of uh, length of this waveguide, we're gonna have zero impedance. That's why at this point we have zero impedance, that means we're gonna have minimal voltage drop with the maximum current capability. For the case of n is equal to two, we're gonna have this kind of waveform, that means impedance is gonna be are very large at open termination at the center and at the edge. Please remember that when we are designing the PDN impedance, our target impedance 
is going to be around milli ohm or micro ohm. That means that only certain area we can have that impedance. So we have to selectively choose your position of your device. Chung Hyun, can you speak? Yeah, 안녕하세요. 네, 간단히 한번 또 설명해 보시겠습니까? Can, can you explain to us? 이제 앞에서 그 위치에 따른 전압과 전류의 그 파동을 설명해 주셨는데 이번에는 그 둘을 이용해서 어, PDN 임피던스, 임피던스를 위치에 따라서 분석해 봤고 어, 그래서 특정 위치에서 원하는 임피던스의 어, 임피던스를 얻을 수 있기 때문에 그 설계할 때그 부분을 고려해야 한다고 하셨습니다. 네, 맞습니다. Uh, yes, you are right. Uh, the impedance is cotangent function. So at certain point of position, impedance will be very high and at certain position, impedance will be very low. So if we keep, have a target impedance like milli ohm or micro ohm, we have certain range of position so that we can have uh, minimal impedance for both n is one and n is two. But there are, will be many higher order numbers up to 10. We have to meet all these uh, modern numbers. That is the difficult part of design. Second uh, observation we here is that if you want to reduce impedance also we have to reduce the wave impedance as well and you you remember that in order to make a small uh, wave impedance we have to use very thin dielectric material with a high dielectric constant now i'd like to discuss a little bit more about the position dependency um this is the uh, impedance as a function of position, let's assume that you, are, you have device, you have device and your device power is connected to power plane and your ground is connected to ground plane. And let's assume that uh, you, your BR position is at the center. Then if you, you look at the impedance GPDN at those positions, you, you are not going to see any high impedance peaks. About, because impedance is zero at the center for the case of n is equal to one, but for the case of n is equal to two, impedance will have maximum value. So you're gonna have maximum impedance at resonance frequency two. The meaning of this uh, graph is that depending on position of your device, some resonance will disappear and some resonance will become maximum value. So resonance is actually determined by the size of your PCB power in ground plane and dielectric constant, but which resonance will become a problem or how much that is gonna be depending on the position of your power BR. Uh, without BR, we cannot connect your device to power and ground. So always we need BR in the multi-layer structures. However, uh, if you put your BR, power and ground BR at the core position, let's assume you have device and your device power is uh, connected to the, the power and ground planes, and then you, you, are, you have certain amount of impedance for uh, first um, resonance, n is equal to one, but for the case of n is equal to two, impedance is gonna become a zero. So in this case, you're gonna see only a resonance peaks at mode number one. This is 
This is a short summary of position dependency and selectivity to see that how much uh, which resonance will be dominant. For let's assume for this case, you're gonna have SSN simultaneous voltage and as you're gonna have SSN and that frequency is gonna be F2. For this case, if you have resonances, um, you're gonna have a frequency component majorly F1 that is less, smaller frequency to F2. So if you have a chance to measure simultaneous switching noise in your computers or your package or chip, that amount of this simultaneous noise, SSN, and the frequency will be determined by this PDN impedance. And this PDN impedance will be quite depending on the positions of your multilayer power and ground plane. Uh, this is the end of the first part of uh, uh, my lecture today. Now I'm going to move on to the next. Uh, so from now on for 30 minutes, I'm going to discuss about the methodologies to control the resonance. The subject of the next 10 slides will be resonance control. So as far as you have power and ground plane, you're gonna have resonances because of these uh, power waves that are traveling in G direction and minus G direction. And by interfering each other, they're gonna have standing wave. And this standing wave frequency is gonna be controlled by mode number N. And the field distribution of the standing wave is gonna be very position dependent. That is the summary of class so far. Now I'd like to, now we have good understanding of this uh, plane resonance, power plane resonance. Now I'd like to discuss how are we gonna control? We cannot remove that absolutely. Always there are gonna be, there is gonna be some resonances. And so that's why I'm using the terminology saying control. First one, is size A and B. Sometimes you have certain resonances and you wanna move around the position resonance. Sometimes so, at some frequencies, this resonance frequency is creating power supplies in this jitter or EMI or something like that. So we wanna move around these frequencies. Sometimes we want to change the position of your VR, but sometimes we cannot change. So we want to change the resonance frequencies to change the field distributions and PDN impedance. One of obvious solution is changing the size of your PCB. Yeah, different size of your PCB and different size of your package power and ground plane gonna generate the different resonance frequencies. That is one parameters we can control the resonance. Second parameter is dielectric constant epsilon. If you choose different dielectric material, this resonance frequency will change. If you have dial higher dielectric material, this resonance frequency will shift to a lower frequencies. If we you use the High, a smaller dielectric material, this resonance frequency will shift to a higher frequencies. So this will not uh, remove this resonances completely, but sometimes we need to control the position of this resonance frequencies. Especially, let's assume this frequency is very close to Wi-Fi frequencies, and it interfere with the. Let's assume you have a PCB and you have uh, GPU or AP, and if you have RF circuit there, some of this resonance frequency will interfere with the RF circuit and that will degrade the RF sensitivity of your uh, RF receiver system. So sometimes we, you wanna uh, 
minimize the overlap. Also, you wanna uh, change your uh, frequencies, resonance frequency, then you can change your PCB size and dielectric material. That is one parameters we can control uh, control the resonance size. Number three is loss. Loss tangent. You remember that we are filling this uh, space between power and ground plane with insulator. If you have an insulator, it may have certain losses. We're gonna have skin effect loss and dielectric loss at really high frequencies. Sometimes this resonance, uh, this loss helps. In signal line, transmission line loss will create the ISI and jitter. To overcome those uh, jitters, we use the equalizer and preemphasis circuit. That was one important part of the signal interconnection design that was discussed some month ago in this class. Now, sometimes in the power delivery network, we intentionally add some loss. If you have, if you do not have any loss, you're gonna have very sharp resonance and very high PDN impedance. But if you have loss, you're gonna reduce the Q factor and you're gonna have a smooth PDN impedance, PDN impedance curve at the resonance frequencies. So impedance peak will be reduced. Of course, sometimes this will generate the DC loss. Sometimes we have to, if we have a DC loss at the power delivery network, that is another concern because we have only certain amount of voltage. Now we want to reduce the voltage uh, because we want to reduce the power consumption in your GPU and IO circuit. Um, but at the extremely high frequencies, if you have resonances and you, if you have EMI problems at those resonance frequencies, sometimes we can add some loss. And if we have a loss, we're gonna have a low Q factors and we can reduce the peak impedance. This is one possible things we can do in the PDN network. Theoretically, theoretically at resonance frequencies, impedance should be infinite. But actually, it is a little bit lower than infinite because of this loss. Loss effect, especially there are two loss mechanisms. One is the skin loss, and the, the other one is the dielectric loss. Sometimes, if necessary, we can add some resistance between power and ground plane. Of course, in DC, they, they cannot be connected. So we have to add some capacitance. This capacitance can serve as decap plus loss. Of course, when we are adding decoupling capacitors, uh, we should be very careful about self resonance frequencies and mutual resonances. We was talking about that a couple of weeks ago, but when you are adding some decoupling capacitors, sometimes you can add some register. And by having those registers, you can reduce the Q and at some resonance frequencies, uh, we can uh, have lower Q and lower impedance. Now I'm talking about some methodologies to, reduce, to control the resonance, especially uh, caused by power wave uh, resonances. Number five, decoupling capacitor. Let's assume that you have certain resonances 
But by having these decoupling capacitors, you remember that we can intentionally create new low impedance area and this resonance, this frequency will be determined by the self resonance frequencies of inductor and capacitor. What I'm saying is your power and ground plane is going to have some resonances as certain resonances can be suppressed by putting some decoupling capacitors. Because of inductor, self-inductance of decoupling capacitors is going to have high impedance above this region. And, but you remember that it, the coupling capacitor has self resonance frequency. So around that resonance frequencies, we can remove uh, these peaks. Uh, my point is that if you have overlap of decoupling capacitor self resonance frequencies and PCB uh, power ground plane resonances, sometimes if you put decoupling capacitor at certain position, at that position, impedance of some resonance can disappear for n equal to one or n equal to two. So selectively, you can kill some resonances. Of course, if you wanna add some decoupling capacitor in your multi-layer PCB, then it will take some area and cost, but selectively you can kill certain resonance frequencies by putting the decoupling capacitor. That's why sometimes in multi-layer PCB of computer, there are so many decoupling capacitors. Decoupling capacitor has certain function. Number one is it can suppress the PDN impedance at uh, from 100 megahertz to 100 megahertz. Uh, that is one uh, function of decoupling capacitor. Second decoupling capacitor function is it can kill some certain PCB resonance frequencies. Number three, that is a subject of my class next week. It can sometimes help to return to make a return current path. So that is a little bit subject right now. What we're gonna so cap decoupling capacitor is really really is becoming very important at the PCB level, as well as package level and chip level. Now I'd like to discuss the case of on-chip PDN. Let's assume that you have a uh, IC integrated circuit and you may have um, you may have certain uh, capacitor. So if your device is connected to power and ground, this on-chip decoupling capacitor can also serve as decoupling capacitor. And usually on-chip decoupling capacitor resonance frequency is very, very high. So by having, by connecting chip, into power and ground plane, you can kill certain frequencies at high resonance frequencies. So PCB level or decoupling capacitor can kill certain resonance frequencies of lower or mode numbers, but on-chip decoupling capacitor itself can help to suppress the simultaneous noise inside chip. And also you remember that on-chip decoupling capacitor have to suppress the PDN impedance at high frequency range, and especially in gigahertz range. But second function of this on-chip PD uh, decoupling capacitor is that you can suppress, or uh, you can kill certain resonances in the gigahertz range. Jonghyun, uh, would you summarize a little bit about this slide for me? Plane resonance control하는 여섯 가지 방법에 대해서 알아봤고요. 첫 번째로 사이즈를 줄여서 위치가 달라지기 때문에 
검증하자는 주파수를 받았는 주파수에 의할 수가 있습니다. 인증할 수 있는 그 주파수에 의해 맞출 수 있었고, 또는 물질 상수를 도모해서 이 주파수를 또 변화시킬 수 있었습니다. 그 다음, 네. 의도적으로 인슐레이터를 컨젝트를 이용을 함으로써 인피던스를 더 맞출 수 있었으며, 아니면 저항을 이용하는 방법도 있었습니다. 이렇게 네 가지 방법이 있었고, 다음 두 가지 방법은 컵, 그린 카페스터를 이용하는 방법인데, 빅잭 자체를 넣게 되면은 이제 낮은 주파수 대역에서 문제가 되는 주파수를 줄일 수 있었고, 이제 온치 자체를 연결하면은 이 온치 자체의 셀프 커플링 카페스터 때문에 비가이렉트 대역의 높은 주파수의 문제가 되는 높은 주파수를 줄일 수가 있었음을 알수 있었습니다. 네. 자, 그래서 그 레조넌스라는 건 본질적으로 있는데 피지컬 사이즈가 있으면 거기서 이제 파워그램 뽑아낼 때 어쨌거나 피해가는 방법이 사이즈나 물질을 줄인다거나 또는 저항을 약간 로스를 넣거나 여기서는 디커플링 캐피스터를 집어넣어 가지고 인텐디드하게 붙이는 것도 있지만 반도체를 연결하는 순간 온치 PDN이 연결이 돼서 온치 디캡이 연결이 돼요. 그래서 주로 작은 영역, 프리퀀시 영역대는 디커플링 캐피스터가 그 레조넌스를 죽이기도 하고, 에, 그래서 온치 PDN이 디캡이 또 하이프리퀀시를 죽이기도 하고 그렇습니다. 근데 이렇게 다 죽이다 보면 결국 인덕턴스가 남고, 또 로스 때문에 저항이 남고, 이런 이제 또 궁극적으로 결국 인덕턴스가 문제가 되고요. 디컵을 왕창 붙인다고 하면 인덕턴스를 줄이는 방법은 최대한 가까이 붙이는 방법밖에 없어요. 네, 그래서 이제 3D 구조로 간다 이 말씀을 드리고요. Now I'd like to give you some examples to control the resonance. Uh, another possibility is that let's assume that you have computer PCB has this kind of rectangular squares. Size, then you're gonna have certain resonance peaks, but sometimes we can change that with different square size. Then we're gonna have A and A dash, B and B dash. Then we're gonna have different spectrum. So depending on the shape, shape of your power and ground plane, it doesn't necessarily to be a just square. Sometimes it could be triangular or rectangular. It could be many different shapes. And depending on shape, you, we're going to have different resonance frequencies. Um, uh, uh, some years ago, some stud my former student did some research on this EBG, electro uh, band gap structure. And it's actually a filter. Filter design. So if you have power plane and ground plane, you're gonna have certain resonance frequencies for n is equal to one, n is equal to two, n is equal to three. So you're gonna have series of resonance peaks. Uh, but somehow we intended certain structures that, that by having via and some plate, this is cross-sectional view. We was able to introduce some capacitance and inductance, and also uh, we're gonna have some plate and via connection. It's gonna be also capacitance and inductance. By putting this kind of structure periodically along the G direction, what we found is that some resonance uh, will disappear, and it is gonna be totally. Suppressed. In semiconductor theory, if you have this kind of periodic structure, you're gonna have band gap. You're gonna have conduction band and balance band. In microwave theory, also if you have certain periodic structure, it's gonna be a band stop filter. So because of this uh, structure, you remember that in order to have standing wave and resonances, we have to need to have a traveling wave into the G direction. And also we need to have a traveling wave into minus G direction. They are interfering each other and they are creating the standing wave and resonances. 
if you have this kind of structure at certain frequencies, this wave cannot travel into G direction and minus G direction. This is the same as the semiconductor theory. In semiconductor, particle can be viewed as a wave. Particle electron have a two property, a particle property and wave property. That's the quantum mechanical theory. And if, you, uh, if the electrons are meeting, periodic crystal structures, they, they can, some frequencies, they cannot travel. That is saying band gap. Here also, we're gonna have band gap from certain frequencies and certain frequencies, wave cannot travel. So this kind of distributed filter design could be a way to suppress certain resonance frequencies. But in order to apply this kind of red uh, technique, we need more complicated metal structures for on-chip and PCB and packages. So at some point, long, long time in the future, we may need this kind of uh, EBG structures, but right now this is more likely academic research. And of course, uh, BR position is an important uh, 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 consideration. And if you are changing the position of BR, some this resonance frequency is totally depending on by the size of your power and ground plane, but the amplitude, how much uh, amplitude of these peaks, resonance peaks will be depending on the position. So sometimes you have certain EMI problem, you can shift the position of your VR and you can control the amplitude of this resonance peaks. Another important uh, uh, design uh, is uh, via shield by decamp. Let's assume that you have a power grant via that is creating the traveling wave, a, a, a current wave that is traveling into the G direction and minus G direction. If you put the decamp and via just adjacent to this via, this will a wave will be detected by BR and it will be consumed by a register in the decap. And this decap can solve, this decap with the BR can solve as shielding structure. So that it, it will reduce some propagation of a resonance wave. Of course, you can also use the differential BR. Rather than having single BR, you can have differential BR and the current excitation by a BR and the other BR will cancel each other. You remember that we were using the differential BR to maintain the impedance. By creating the virtual uh, ground plane, we was able to maintain the impedance. That was the very important part of the um, uh, differential VR. But what I'm saying at this moment is the power also in the future, right? not by now, but power also can use differential VR. One VR is supplying the plus voltage and the other VR is supporting the minus voltage. And this is the future research subjects and so on. So, so far I was giving a lectures on, uh, on a power and ground plane resonance. I spent some uh, time in this class to derive all these equations, position dependent as well as the length dependent and mode numbers. And I was trying to derive equation to show that at certain positions at resonance frequencies, the impedance is very high. At the second part of my class today, I was talking about how we can avoid or how we can uh, suppress or how we can uh, change the, those resonances on the name of plane resonance control. Thank you for your listening. Hyunwoo, would you summarize whole class today? Oh, 네, 네. 어, 오늘 수업... 
에 대해서 처, 처음에는 그 볼테지랑 커런트 웨이브에 대한 이제 수식을 바운드리 컨디션이랑 웨이브 이케이션 솔루션을 통해서 이제 유도를 해주셨고 이제 그걸 통해서 이제 플랜 레지던스가 어떻게 형성되는지를 확인했습니다. 그리고 최근에 그 마지막 강연에서는 이제 플랜 레지던스를 컨트롤하는 방법에 대해서 설명해 주셨는데 큰 기본적인 방법으로 이제 레지던스 아 플랜 레지던스를 에 레지던스 프리퀀시 공식에 의해서 이제 그 플레인 사이즈를 변경하는 방법이 있었고 그다음에 모양을 모양 자체를 변경하는 방법도 있었고 이제 비아 포지션을 따로 따로 배치함으로써 이제 컨트롤하는 방법도 있었고 이제 마지막으로 디퍼런셜 비아를 사용함으로써 이제 플레인 레지던스를 서프레션하는 방식에 대해서 오늘 전체적으로 설명해 주셨습니다. 네, uh, there might be some other things. Also, we can design the functional BR uh, to shield, to make a complete shield. 그런데 이제 오늘 강의에 the most important of my class today, my message to you is that power delivery should be viewed as wave. That is very special perspective of my own. In circuit theory, Yeah, actually, they never think about any, uh, they just assume the idea of power supply. In power electronic society, uh, they consider somehow about parasitic inductance and resonance frequencies, but that is usually in the kilohertz range. Now, I'm looking at power delivery network in the gigahertz range, from gigahertz to 100 gigahertz. My, I'm saying that we have to view it as a current wave. Current wave means current is kilo amps level and voltage should be milli voltage level. That means impedance should be extremely low, but still the wave has to propagate. And if we apply the impedance matching uh, concept, Impedance matching should be in the milliohm range or microohm range. Because of the wave nature, they are gonna have traveling wave into the G direction and minus G direction. The relationship between incident wave and reflection wave will be determined by boundary condition. And usually power and ground cannot be connected in DC. So it is open termination. Because of that, we're gonna have standing wave. And as far as we have a standing wave, we ha are having selectively resonance function. That, that selectivity is resonance number, N1, N2, N3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So very, very, very discrete, the discrete frequencies. And another message is that impedance and current delivery from, uh, capability is position dependent. Now, but our distal circuit need very broadband higher current. So in order to do that, we need to have some decoupling capacitor inside chip and inside package, and they will filter out some of these resonances. Especially at high frequencies, on-chip decap will filter it out, and low frequencies, uh, on-chip decoupling capacitor or package level decoupling capacitor can help. But if you add more and more decoupling capacitor, that's okay. And um, but the coupling capacitor each has certain frequency range, so we have to design very hierarchically. And uh, but it will take some areas. And decoupling capacitor has always self-inductance self and resonance frequency. So eventually we have to fight against the inductance again. But at the PCB level, um, there is the RF circuit and analog circuit and digital circuits are usually placed at the same PCB, especially for smartphone. Even though you have very sh good shielding technique and decoupling capacitors, there are always uh, gonna have uh, challenges to minimize the interference between these resonance frequencies and RF uh, receiver frequencies. 
sometimes if you are very um, lucky, you may not have this problem. But sometimes, many, many cases, you, uh, you have some problem because you have RF circuit and the uh, zero is very sensitive to these resonance frequencies. Thank you for your attention. Next week, even though uh, we, uh, next week is the midterm exam, I'm gonna con uh, continue my class. Next Monday and Wednesday, I'm gonna talk about ground design. Uh, uh, ground is very, very important, but it could be a subject of whole semester, but selectively I, I will choose two subjects, one subject on class and second subject on Wednesday. And subject is gonna relate it to be a deton current path. As far as the uh, uh, we have charge conservation, always current has to come back. In the power wave as well, uh, we have instant wave and reflected wave. Also, is we have if we have power plane, ground plane, when the power wave is traveling, always we have a, a two current on the top plane and ground plane. So I'm going to talk about the turn current. And in actual uh, circuit uh, design we, uh, or spy simulation, we usually do not consider any ground return path. Uh, but actually current has to come back. And I'm gonna talk about those uh, very important issues on next Monday and Wednesday. And a week after Monday, we're gonna have a midterm presentation, uh, final presentation. Thank you for your attention. Um, I, I'm sure you're going to have a very good day today. Thank you. Bye-bye.